Welcome everyone. And thank you again for tuning in to the fourth and final in this PESI series, the special talks by Dr. David Burns on the four great deaths of the self. I am Dr. Rhonda Borowski, the host of the Feeling Good podcast and a team therapist in California. Dr. Burns is the creator of the new and very powerful team therapy. He is the author of the best selling self help good books, Feeling Good and Feeling Great. And he's an adjunct emeritus professor of psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. And today we're going to have a very special episode. Okay. Thank you, Rhonda. And uh, we're, we're going to do, a, uh, instead of just pontificating about philosophical deaths of the self, we're going to get into the nitty gritty and demonstrate the 15-minute the uh, weight loss cure, uh, something that I think a lot of you will be interested in. The techniques that we're going to uh, illustrate you can use for any habit or, or addiction. And if you want to learn more, uh, there's, there's two things you can do. If you like what we're going to do, I'm going to actually uh, see if I can cure Rhonda's uh, you know, recent weight gain problem in 15 minutes uh, using a technique called the, ha the uh, triple paradox that I created. Uh, if you want to learn more, uh, the, 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 the new, my book, Feeling Great, I had so many new things to put in there. It got too big, so I had to take out about nine chapters, including two chapters on habits and addictions that are really dynamite. And if you're interested, if you go to my website, feelinggood.com, www.feelinggood.com, uh, you'll go to my website. And if you go to the home page, which is where you'll land, go to the bottom of it, and it says free chapter offer. Click here. And you click there and you'll get not one, but the two free chapters, unpublished chapters that were intended for my book, Feeling Great, but didn't make it into the book because there was just too much other stuff. And so if you go and get those free chapters and, and, and read them after today's talk, that'll show you exactly how to use these techniques for your own habit or addiction, whatever it might be. So, um, uh, Rhonda, tell us a little bit about what happened, how this uh, uh, all too familiar weight loss thing happened, or weight gain thing happened. Well, you mentioned last time, last week, that my husband and I went to Europe for five weeks. We visited my son who lives in Germany, and then we traveled to other places in Europe that, has, that have really, really delicious food. And and I thought the entire time I was there, I thought, well, I'm on vacation. I can always lose weight later. I'm going to eat everything that I possibly can. And, and that's what I did. <laughs> and <laughs> Everything that I want. Everything that I wanted, everything that looked good. And there was a lot of things that looked good. Um, and I gained about seven pounds. And since coming to Cal back home, I've kind of been struggling with, with how to take that weight off. And... I'm hoping that doing this triple paradox with you could put me on the right track. Yeah, great. Well, we'll 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 check it out and we'll find out. And uh, and the triple paradox is a paradoxical technique to deal with any habit or addiction, but it's hard for therapists to learn because it's the opposite of what most therapists do is to try to help you with your procrastination, with your overeating, with your drinking too much or whatever. And most research studies have shown that almost pretty much all of the approaches to weight loss, if you do controlled outcome studies and look at uh, short-term results and long-term results, they're not, they're not very impressive. And so I've gone in the opposite direction of instead of trying to help the patient with all this advice and helpful te techniques that I knew very well rarely were effective. I've said, why don't we instead take a motivational approach to addictions, habits and addictions, that, that's really a motivational thing. It's not a behavioral thing so much. It's not a cognitive thing so much. We overeat because we want to overeat because food tastes really, really good. And so, um, I've started working with people with overweight or any problems doing a triple paradox. And you start out with a piece of paper and you put, you can just make one, you see mine here is pretty crude, but we'll show you a fancy one, but 
you just make three vertical columns, but you put two lines from top to bottom, so you have three, three columns, and then you label the left column advantages of my habit or addiction. What, what are some really wonderful things, for example, about overeating? Now, that's the opposite of, of what most weight loss experts will do. But let's face it, there's some really tremendous payoffs from overeating, from from drinking, from just about any habit or addiction. So we're going to list, I'm going to ask you, Rhonda, to list the uh, benefits of eating as much as you want, whenever you want. And let's, let's say what, what's great about that in the left-hand column. And then in the middle column, we're going to put the disadvantages of change, which in this case would mean dieting and exercising more. And, and again, this is paradoxical. Instead of persuading you to diet and exercise, we're going to try to persuade you not to diet and exercise and give all the, the really good reasons not to do those healthy things. And then in the right-hand column is going to be core values. What is your overeating or whatever your habit is? Show about you and your core values that's uh, positive and, and awesome. And we might be able to come up with 10 or 15 or even more really good reasons to, to keep overeating. And then we'll see what happens as a result of this relatively simple exercise. So can you uh, start us off here, uh, Rhonda? What could we put in the, what are some advantages and benefits of, of, of overeating? Well, food makes me really happy. Okay. Um, so we'll put that down, food, put that in the left-hand column. And if you want to do this at home and do it on paper, you'll, you'll learn the, the, the technique and then it'll be easy to do it with your own habit or, or addiction. Yeah, food ma makes me happy. Now, I think the Dalai Lama, because uh, this is a little bit on the, you know, the death of the South. It's the, these talks have been kind of on, you know, practical mysticism, you might say. And the Dalai Lama said that uh, happiness is the purpose of, of life. And there's a lot of wisdom to that. So when you overeat, you're actually being profoundly spiritual. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. What, what, what are some other benefits? You know, food is really soothing. When, when I'm upset or I've had a hard day and I have some chocolate, it really does calm me down when I'm upset. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, awesome. That, that, that's a second huge be benefit. What, what are some other really wonderful things about eating whatever you want, whenever you want? Well, it shows how adventurous I am. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I, I, I can eat cricket. I've eaten crickets and um, grasshoppers. Not that those are fattening, but, you know, when I'm, you know, we went to Paris and we walked past um, bake, bake shops practically on every corner. And, and I could go in and taste things that were really unusual to an American palate. Yeah, so you can have an adventure, amazing adventures. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Food. Yeah, you have adventures through food. And how, how, how did they taste, the grasshoppers? They, they tasted delicious. <laughs> did they really? Oh, yeah. my goodness. I'm going to go out and see if I can find one in the backyard after this uh, video. Oh, no. Exotic <laughs> fruits that we don't have here, you know, baked into. Oh, yeah. Pastry. Yeah, amazing things. Uh -huh. Any like, other? What are yeah, some another other? Advantage, it's quick. It's yeah, uh -huh. I could walk past a bakery and buy um, a baguette loaded with really yummy different things. And then quick and easy. Out. Yeah, so it's quick and easy. Then when I'm hungry, I'm eating, you know, this delicious sourdough baguette. Yeah, awesome. awesome. What are some other uh, positives of eating great food? Well, you know, um, I really love to bake myself. And when I bake, I'm making... I'm making myself happy, like I'm distracted from whatever is going on in my life that might be upsetting because I'm focusing on what I'm doing. And then I'm able, I'm able to give things to other people in my life and then I make them happy. So it's kind of a double, it's a double yeah. pleasure, making myself happy and I'm, I'm providing kind of a service to others. I'm making them happy too. Yeah, so there's a kind of an interpersonal dimension to, to overeating. That, that's really neat. So, so far we've got a, 
uh, uh, eating makes me happy. It's soothing. It, it, it's an adventure, like when you're in Paris or something, and you have all these fantastic things to eat, and there's shops all over the place. It's, life becomes exciting. It's quick and easy. And at home, you love to bake, and then you can give wonderful things that you've prepared to others and make them happy. So there's a kind of an interpersonal connect connectedness associated with it. And any other benefits? Um, well, sometimes it reminds me of happy memories of my childhood. Oh, yeah. Or even like, thank, you know, for holidays like Thanksgiving or Hanukkah or Christmas, you know, you know, food is, food has memories of, of happy experiences. Yeah, yeah, memories, you know, family togetherness and, and religious occasions. Thanksgiving, to me, is by far my ha happiest holiday because there's no commercialism and you can be together with family and you can eat wonderful food and, 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 and hang out together. Um, so that's a neat one. A any other ben benefits? I think that's it. Okay, that, that's a great list. Now let's go to the middle column. And again, this will be counterintuitive to a lot of you, but what are some of the, the, the disadvantages of diet and exercise? Because any, uh, any weight loss is going to have to have some uh, common, uh, it's going to have to have some components of uh, e eating less and self-deprivation self and uh, and exercising more and what are what's the downside of uh you know change well i'll have to deny i'll have to deny myself things that are pleasurable yeah uh, deny ple pleasure that 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 sounds very sucky to me what what are some other disadvantages well you know i work really long hours and sometimes i get tired and i really need to get sleep and rest and if i have to get up and exercise then i'm going to cut back on my on my sleep oh yeah uh-huh uh so that that de decreases sleep and i would add a, another disadvantage um is that then then you're going to get punished for working long hours because then you've got to go and work more yeah, exactly. So there's a kind of a punishment involved. So another really big disadvantage to me is that in order to lose weight, I'm going to have to carry my phone around and get on an app and figure out all the calories that I'm eating. And that's really a hassle. I don't want to be tied to my phone and I don't want to be looking at an app all day. And I don't want to have to figure that stuff out. It's just, yeah. too, it's just too much mind stuff. That seems yeah it's effort eff effortful to 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 figure out all the calorie stuff and be on an app all day and takes yeah. effort effort to be constantly counting calories and, and figuring out that's a huge one what are some other disadvantages of of diet and exercise well when you diet you have to be a little bit hungry sometimes like you have, yeah like you can't eat as much as you want all the time and and when I get hungry, I get grumpy, and sometimes I get a headache, and I hate those feelings. Yeah, so you have to put up with hunger. You get a, a, a grumpy. You, you, you get a headache. Those are plenty of disadvantages. What What are some more? Now, are you one of these people who really loves exercise? I actually do like to exercise. Oh, okay. That's, that's... Well, if you if you didn't, then you could add to the middle column, like me. You you have to do something you hate. Exercise. Yeah, I don't mind exercising, that's the, but that's a disadvantage of change. I already exercise, so in order to lose weight, I'm going to have to even do more. And oh, yeah. Where am I going to find time to do that? Yeah. I'm going to have to put more effort or exercise harder, or change how I exercise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I've been increasing my, my running and uh, just for pure, purely health reasons, and uh, I, I just do not enjoy it whatsoever. Oh. The only good thing about it is when I'm done every day. But uh, yeah, and a lot of people who are overweight, they're not going to, are like me, you don't get the runner's high, you don't, you don't enjoy it. So that's a potential downside. What, what are any other disadvantages of lo losing weight? I think those are good. I think that's it. Um, how about 
have to be so self-disciplined? Is, is that a downside? Yeah, I have to be self-disciplined. That's true. Well, that's kind of a denying myself. I have to be self-disciplined, and I have to put in a lot of planning. Yeah, 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 a lot of planning all the time. Yeah. And a lot of energy, a lot of focus on, on, on that. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to the right-hand column. Let's summarize that. The disadvantages, I deny myself pleasure. I already work long hours, and then if I have to exercise more, it cuts down on my sleep. This feels like punishment. I'll have to figure out calories on an app all, all day long. This is effortful. I'll have to put up with a lot of hunger, which is incredibly unpleasant. Then I'll feel grumpy. I'll get headaches. Uh, and then I'll have to increase the amount of exercise. I'll have to use self-discipline all the time. I'll have to be planning things all the time, and it takes uh, energy and, 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 and effort. Now, what are the core values? What is the... Uh, uh, the, the current, the, the status quo, just, you know, eating what, whatever you want. And what does that show about you and your core values that's really positive and awesome? Well, one thing that I think that's really important to me is that it shows how flexible I am. Like, I, I don't want to have a rigid diet where, you know, I can't eat dairy or I can't eat milk or, uh, I mean, um, gluten or I can't eat this or I can't eat that. I want to be able to have, you know, really broad ranging you know, meals, that includes any, everything. Yeah, that's cool. That's great. What, what else does it show about you? Um, this is about core values, about maintaining. Yeah, just eating whatever you want. And what, what is, what's that really cool things about you does that show? You know, I'm, I'm, I, can, I can be really spontaneous. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a cool thing. What else? And and I can um, I can meet my needs really quickly. Like if my need for hunger, my need for food, because I'm hungry, I can just go have a baguette and um, yes, not uh -huh. and be like immediately satisfy my need. Yeah, and so could we also? Would it be too much of a stress to say then you're overeating as a form of self love? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool being kind to yourself um, I mean I think that's really true mm -hmm, yeah absolutely absolutely what else does it show about you um, I can suggest some things okay well, um, some for some people it shows that 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 they're a rebel, that they're not buying into you know society's values. You have to be so thin to be worthwhile. Yeah, I think that fits. Mm -hmm. Okay, a, a rebel and an individualist. Yes, but also being a rebel, like I'm not going to follow any fad diets. Oh yeah, yeah. And it also shows how fun I, you know, I can really dive into being fun. Oh, yeah, right. And it shows how much I care about other people. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh, right, I love that. Well, that's an in impressive list, too. And anything else come to mind? Um, no, not really. So, um... Let, let's review this list. The advantages of overeating, it makes you happy, it's soothing, it can be an adventure, like when you're in Paris and, you know, going eating all this fantastic food and unusual foods, and it's quick and easy, and, and, uh, and, and you love to bake and give, and then give to others, so it, 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 you make other people happy, there's a social dimension to it. It gives you memories of your childhood and 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 the religious uh, occasions of Thanksgiving and and, and Hanukkah and uh, uh, Christmas and, and New Year's and and being being with others and enjoying wonderful meals. And I have a memory of my uh, Phil Allen, one of my roommates, and I think freshman or sophomore year, I got to go to his house. 
because I was at Amherst. And my family was in Arizona, so I couldn't afford to go home for a holiday. So I got to have Thanksgiving at his house. And, oh, man, I can picture it right now. It was so fantastic. And I remember they had this beautiful bed for me to sleep in. And I slept 13 hours that night. And, and, really? the, and the Thanksgiving meal and all the family was there. It was such a beautiful occasion. And then the disadvantages of diet and exercise, you deny yourself pleasure. You, you, you're you already working long hours and, and, and you need time to sleep. And, and if you do exercise, it cuts into your sleep time and it feels like punishment sometimes. And you have, you have to figure out the calories on an, on an app all day long and, and you have to put up with hunger and you're going to feel grumpy and headachy. And, and, and then you'll have to exercise even more which is more time consuming. You have to use self-discipline constantly and you're constantly fighting off feelings of, of deprivation. You have to be planning all the time and it takes a lot of energy. And the, the final thing is, uh, wh what does the overeating show about you and your core values that's positive and awesome and shows you're flexible, you, you don't have to, have to have some kind of rigid diet. You can be spontaneous and eat you know, wide variety of things. You can meet your needs quickly. Uh, it's a form of self-love to, to, to comfort yourself with, with wonderful foods. Shows you're a rebel and an individualist. You don't have to follow fad diets or believe that you're, you have to be skinny to be wor worthwhile. You don't have to live up to cultures, these ideals that they put in front of us with all these super skinny models and 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 the the eating shows that you can be a fun person and that you really care about others and so then my question would be Rhonda uh, you know there's a lot of techniques we could use or you could use to to lose weight but uh, it I'm beginning to ask myself right now why would you want to do that in spite of all of these these wonderful things well, I'm kind of asking myself that too, but then the main, there are two, because these are really like great reasons um, to continue eating. There are two reasons. One is health. I think my cholesterol level has gone way up oh, and kind of an unhealthy level. And that, you know, I, we have, I have, you know, that kind of runs in my family. So um, that's really a concern. And the other day I went to a, a small gathering of, my friends and we all took a picture and I really didn't like the way I looked. And um, I know I'm kind of, I, you know, maybe that's a little vain, but that kind of showed me that I'm not in the best shape that I actually could be. And um, I did feel bad. It, it did make me feel bad about myself. And my son is getting married in April. We're having a big ceremony and I want to make sure that I, I look my best and I feel my best. And maybe one day I'll have grandchildren and I want to live a long time so that I can, you know, have a relationship with my grandchildren. Awesome. So you, you really do then want to lose some weight? I think so. Okay. Now, I think we might have time for one other technique, although there's many that, that we can use. And we can do the devil's advocate technique, which is a way to... Uh, uh, fight temptations. And again, it's a paradoxical technique because the therapist is in the role not of trying to help, but of being that tempting voice in your mind that gets you to overeat. And we'll just do a real quick demonstration of this and then we'll bring it to closure. But what are some of the tempting thoughts that you have when, when you're tempted to, you know, buy fat, fattening foods at the grocery store or you're tempted to eat something, you see something in, in front of you? What, what kind of thoughts do you have? Well, one of my first thoughts is, well, I already exercised this morning, so I could eat whatever I want. Okay, yeah, well, that's a good one. So let's write this down. And those of you who are listening, you might want to write these down too, or your own tempting thoughts. Uh, I, I exercised, so so I so I can so I can eat. That, that yeah, that that's a real good one. What what else? Um, <clears throat> you know, I deserve this. Yeah, that write that down. Yep. I, I deserve this. And what, what is this? What What is the most tempting food for you? Right now, cheese and crackers. Cheese, okay, okay. <laughs> um, how about some thoughts about, uh, thought about cheese and crackers? Yeah, I love the, I love the taste. 
the, you know, I love the crunch. The crunch is really satisfying. You know, it makes me feel really good. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay, that that's a good one. What what's another thought? Oh, well, I know if I have the chocolate, I'll feel better. If I if I if I have the chocolate. Yeah, if I eat this chocolate, I'll feel better. Oh, and what kind of chocolate is your favorite? Oh, chocolate chip cookies. Oh, okay, chocolate chip cookie. I'll I'll feel better. Yeah. And one more, and then we'll show how it works. Um. Well, what else should I say? I think. Um, I, I'm hungry, and this is easy. Just grab what's that, grab whatever you can see. Okay, perfect. Now, again, we're going to work paradoxically. I'm going to play the role of the tempting voice in your mind, and and even though I'm the therapist, I'm going to try hard to trick you or tempt you in, into overeating and see if you can defeat me. Okay. Um, so could I talk to you for just a second, Rhonda? Sure. You know who I am. You're Rhonda's tempting thoughts. Yep, I'm the devil. And Ooh. I want to remind you that you <laughs> exercise this morning, so you, you can eat now. You have the right to eat now. It's okay. Go for it. Well, I did exercise this morning, but I probably only exercised a couple hundred calories and that doesn't I that doesn't mean I I can eat now a thousand calories I still have to balance out that what goes in and what goes out okay so who won actually I think I won okay big or small big big okay great but um, you deserve this you, you deserve some some cheese and crackers Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I don't think food has to be used as a reward. I could find another way of rewarding myself. I deserve um, that cheese and crackers, but I also deserve um, some a sense of peace and contentment. And I could just change the way I'm thinking about the food and about my situation, and then I, I can, I can, I can create other kinds of of uh, rewards besides food. Yeah, but you love the crunch and the cheese. Mm. I do. It's so yummy. Yeah, well, so just grab one. Just they're right in front of you. Just reach your hand out and touch that cracker with the cheese on it. <laughs> just bring it up to your mouth and your I can lips smell will the cheese quiver. Right yeah, and your nose will smell those beautiful smells. <laughs> well, I think I could like reward myself on Saturday. Like I don't have to eat like I don't have to eat like everything I want constantly, but I don't have to deprive myself. Like on Saturday, I could give myself, um, you know, the, I could I could I can say okay, well I'm gonna I'm not gonna eat it now, but uh, on Saturday I'll, I'll give myself a little bit of a reward. Okay, but but right now, if you eat this chocolate chip cookie, you'll feel really good. You'll feel a lot better. Mmm, chocolate mm. chip cookie. Look at it. It's so fresh and crunchy and delicious looking. <laughs> well, it will make me feel better while I'm eating it. And while it's in my mouth and I'm crunching on it, it will make me feel better. But after I've swallowed it and it's over, I'll kind of even forget that it felt good while I was eating it. And um, and then I'll feel worse. Like sometimes I might feel upset in my stomach or I might also feel like guilty and bad and judgmental about myself. So, you know, it's really the, the, the brief moment that I'm eating the chocolate chip cookie isn't worth all the punishment for afterward. Awesome. Well, there's just one more thing that I wanted to mention to you, Rhonda. You're hungry. So go for it. Well, I am hungry. And it is easy to grab something that has a lot of calories in it, like a, you know, toast. But it's also easy to grab something that doesn't have a lot of calories, like an apple. And I, I do have a lot of food in the house that's lower calories that can satisfy me without being high caloric. Right. So who won? I think I won. Big or small? I think I won really big. 
Big or huge? Huge. I think I want huge. to use. Now, one teaching point for those of you who are therapists, or if you're even helping a friend with this technique, if 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 you're quote patient or client or friend or whatever, cannot convincingly respond to these tempting thoughts. Uh, you 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 should not try to help them. But what I say is, well, maybe maybe you're not ready yet, or maybe this isn't something you want to do just at this time. And and God bless you. I I can totally totally accept that. Um, so maybe we 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 should be working on something else instead. Instead, and again, that that's a paradox. You do not try to help the the person. And it and when you paradox them in that way, most of the time that jump to and say, no, no, wait a minute. I think I can talk back to that tempting thought. Let me try again. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if, if the person doesn't want to change, you know, maybe you're treating a teenager and their parents sent them to, to you. I never try to help people against their will because it just doesn't work. And if, if somebody can't sell me on the idea that they really want to give up this habit or addiction, then I just sit with open hands and and say go, go go for it. That that's okay. And and if you change your mind at, at some point and you want some help, come on back and we'll pick up right where we left left off. How are you feeling right now, Rhonda? I'm feeling kind of motivated. Okay. I'm kind of excited, actually. Okay, great. Well, we'll at our follow up talk and um, we'll post the, uh, the 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 date and the time. It's a Wednesday at the end of January. I think it's January 26th. Yeah, and, and it will be our time, West Coast time, 11 to 1, and then Central time, it'll be 1, 1 to 3, and probably East Coast time, it'll be 2 to 5. We'll, we'll have that information, and, and then we'll find out how, how, how you've been doing, so we'll, we'll hold you accountable. Okay. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. And now the Rhonda, who is the host, do we have any questions for Rhonda or David? Um, well, you, you know, you've talked about the death of the ego in four different ways, and you've given so many really inspiring stories. And I know this might sound like a question I should have asked in the beginning, or, but why does the ego have to die completely to recover from depression or anxiety or troubled relationships or habits or addictions? Can't we just maintain a little bit of ego? Actually, a little bit of ego is fine. Uh, it's only when things are interfering and causing problems for you. There, there aren't any pure goods or pure bads. And, and often, you know, going for the golden mean or changing something uh, partially rather than going for a home run can, you, can frequently, you know, lead to tremendous victories and tremendous joy. I don't know. Is, is that an okay answer? Yeah, that's great. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks for, I hope you enjoyed this this session. I want to thank Linda Jackson and uh, uh, Rachel and uh, all the folks at Pepsi for giving us this chance. And thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the series and hope you'll join us at the end of January for we'll give you a chance to do some work on your own habit or addiction. So. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.